Okay, in this video, I'm going to use the example from our supplementary material to show you how to calculate correlation coefficient in Excel. I'm going to show you three different methods of calculating coefficient of correlation. Okay, let's look at the uh, example first. The first automobile crash in the United States occurred in New York City in 1896 when a motor vehicle collided with a pedal cycle rider. Cycle car accidents are a serious concern for insurance companies. About 53,000 cyclists have died in traffic crashes in the United States since 1932. Demographic information such as this is often available from government agencies. It can be useful to insurers who use it to set appropriate rates and to retailers who must plan what safety equipment to stock and how to present it to their customers. This becomes a more pressing concern when the demographic profiles change over time. Now here's the data on the mean age of cyclists killed each year during the decade from 1998 to 2008. Next, I'm going to switch to my Excel file. The data shown previously are listed here. In B column, we have years. In C column, we have mean age of cyclists killed in accidents. At the very beginning, we are going to do some very basic things. For example, we're going to calculate means, standard deviations, and sample size. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a trick. First of all, I'm going to highlight all the values for x. Right click, define name. I'm just going to call this data year underscore x. Click OK. Similarly, we are going to name those mean ages. Define name. Well, let's call that mean age y. Click OK. Next, we're going to find the average of the years and average of mean ages. Let's start with mean of years. We're going to use the function average. Remember, we renamed those values, so all we need to do is to type year. Here it comes, year underscore x. Okay, return, we get mean of year is 2003. Similarly, we can find the average of mean ages. Okay, average of mean age y. And we get the mean is 37.18. Similarly, we can find standard deviations of x and y as well. x is year and y is mean age. STD. This is a sample, so we're going to choose stdev.s. Once again, we're going to type year underscore x. The standard deviation of x is 3.3166 years. And standard deviation of y is going to be 3.09 years. And then we're going to find the sample size. The function we're going to use in Excel is called count. Count, well, we can count years, right? And no surprise, we have 11 data points. Next, I'm going to show you one way of calculating coefficient of correlation. In the first method I'm going to show you, 
we are going to use covariance. Let's see how that works. In E columns, I created x minus x bar. x bar is nothing but symbol mean of x, 2003. And in F column, we have 1 minus y bar. In G column, we have the product of E and F. Okay, let's give it a try how it works and see what it means next. And the first x is 1998 minus x bar, which is 2003. I'm going to use absolute cell reference because every time we calculate x minus x bar, x bar remains the same. And we're going to do the same thing for y minus y bar. First y is 32 minus y bar, which is 37.18. And I would like to fix it. Okay. And in g column, it's the product of the two. So it's going to be e3 times f3. All right, now let's take a look. X1 is 1998, mean is 2003, and we're talking about five years below average. Y1 is 32, Y bar is 37. Similarly, here we are talking about 5.18 years below average. And then we're going to repeat the calculation for the other 10 data points. Here we go. Once we get all those numbers and we take a look, what do we find? When x is below average, y is also below average. Similarly, when x is above average, y is also above average. That is to say, x and y are positively correlated. And next, I'm going to show you how to calculate the covariance based on the information we got earlier. It's going to be equal to the sum of those products divided by sample size, which is 11 minus 1 return. The covariance is 9.9. .9. To calculate coefficient of correlation, it's really easy. R is equal to covariance divided by the product of standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. And the coefficient of correlation in this case is 0.9652. Now let me show you the second method of calculating R. And this one is from our supplementary material. To begin, we are going to calculate z-score for each of the axes and y's. To do that, for x1, it's equal to x minus x bar. We have that from our previous calculation divided by the standard deviation of x, which is 3.3. .3. Once again, I'm going to use absolute cell reference. Return. And the meaning of this number, negative 1.5, is the following. x1, 1998, is about 1.5 standard deviation below the mean of 2000. Three. Next, we're going to find a z-score for y1. It's equal to y1 minus y bar divided by standard deviation of y. 
which is in C16. In K column, I'm going to find the product of the two. Once we did the whole thing for x1, y1, we're going to repeat that for all the other 10. No surprise, when zx is negative, zy is also negative. On that hand, when zx is positive, zy is also positive. That implies x and y are positively correlated. Next, let's calculate R. The formula is in the material. Uh, it's equal to the sum of all those products divided by M minus 1 and is 11. No surprise at all, those two R's are the same. Indeed, we can actually show that those two formulas are equivalent. And next, I'm going to show you a much faster way of calculating R, coefficient of correlation. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's go to data, data analysis, and there's a function called correlation right here. Click it. Let's tell Excel input range, they are nothing but x's and y's in our example. And I would like to leave the output on the same page. Click OK. Now we see our value immediately, which is 0 0.96522. Let me highlight it. And this is our R value based on the third method. 